Hello again and welcome to Unreal Engine 4 snack size videos. In this episode I'm going to explain what a cast node does. What a cast node does, essentially it takes one object, a generic object, and returns it as a specific type of that same object. The best way to explain it, in my point of view, is imagine if you're walking down the street and you think you see a friend right out in front of you, uh, 100 yards away. You call out for their name to see if they turn around or not. If they turn around, you can then become friends with them and meet up with them and discuss things. If it's not them, and it's some, and someone else completely, a complete stranger, you got it wrong, therefore you failed. That's essentially what this is going on here. So imagine if the object input here is that person we're seeing down, walking down the street. We're going to check whether or not they are equal to uh, a certain person, in this case a first person character uh, in, in this terms. And if it is, we're going to shout out, the computer's going to shout out, and if it is a first person character, it's going to come out of here. If it isn't, it's going to cast failed and go down this way. Once I've once I have casted to them successfully, I will have this reference then to them. So you've managed you've managed to call out to your friend, you they are your friend, and now you have access to them, and so you can ask them questions and find out information from them. That's essentially what's going on here. So a good way to explain this is by actually doing something. So up here I've got a basic setup here of this pickup to make it uh, be destroyed when I walk into it. So the way this is going to work, I've got an event that is actor begin overlap. On overlap, we're going to call out this execute line into this cast. A cast needs an object, okay? Otherwise, it's pointless. It doesn't actually do anything. So this object here is going to be this other actor. Now, notice if I hover over the other actor, it is simply just an actor object reference, meaning this could be absolutely anything, anything at all overlapping this actor. I want to see and access whether or not it is actually the player. So one way of doing that is check if this actor, if I call out to it and it responds. So it's other actor here, I can plug into the object, the cast will call out to this other actor and if it is a first person character, it we're going to come off of this top one here into a destroy actor. Let's click compile and have a look and see what we've got. So here's my little pickup, walk into it and away it goes. So the cast was successful. My computer called out, took this other actor, saw it in the distance, called out to it, seen if it was the, the right person, and if it, and it was, therefore, I destroyed it. Hopefully that's an analogy that works quite well. Um, here we're going to go and explain it a bit further. So a cast can also um, come up with a regular error. Okay, So one error we could have, for example, is this. So this warning basically means if I go down the bottom here, it says first person character does not inherit from player controller, therefore it would always fail. And that's true because I've got a get player controller. A controller is not an actor. It does not, uh, a first person character has nothing to do and it's not related to at all the get player controller. So I've got, uh, in, uh, going back to our analogy, imagine you see a tree down the high street and you call out the, uh, for your friend's name, Steve. But it actually isn't Steve, it's a tree. It's, you know it's a tree, it's always going to be a tree, it's never going to be Steve, therefore it would always fail. So that's why you always get this warning if you do get a, a, a mismatch. If it does come up and you do have a mismatch, just reevaluate and make sure you've got the correct cast going up here and the correct input going in here. So back to our working prototype. As I said, we get the as first person character reference here. Because now I've casted to this uh, character, I now have a link to them, okay, I have access to them. So if I wanted to, I could plug this into the target of Destroy Actor, and Destroy Actor will now destroy the player character rather than the pickup. And see, I can't control it, it's gone, okay. So, obviously that's game breaking, you don't want that to happen, so we're going to disconnect that. But because I have reference to them, I also have access to all of their variables which is usually right at the bottom. See? Now, a word of warning with casting. 
Casting can be quite ex uh, expensive for a computer to do, especially if it's done in something like a for loop, uh, where you're doing multiple hundreds of co uh, casts in every single uh, render. This is uh, very expensive, and therefore you don't want, don't want to rely on it too much. So you have to use it a bit cautiously and a bit uh, thinking ahead a lot of the time. So if one way we can think ahead is rather than doing event begin actor begin overlap, uh, I can one typical place you do it is begin play and get player character do the cast to the first person character here in this case and say at the start I want to store a reference of this character I can just come out of as, person, as first person character and promote to verbal I now have a, a reference to that first person character, the player character. So if I want to do anything now to this reference, I can drag the reference out from the variable list. And now I can access the same variables that we just saw a moment ago. And that'll do it. Um, hopefully that explains casting to you well enough and hopefully you get my analogy um thanks very much for watching please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notify bell uh very much thank you and uh yeah if you have any requests about specific blueprint uh, videos you want to see just like this please let us know in the comments below thanks very much and i'll see you next time Bye bye